Alright, this video is about static friction and how to do problems with static friction force. This corresponds to section 5.2 in the textbook. So I'm going to show three examples. First example, we have um, an object and we're pushing on it with a force of 70 newtons. Let's say this is a couch. Okay, so the couch has a mass of 100 kilograms. And let's say we push on it and it does not move, so it's at rest. So if it's at rest, that tells us something important about the forces. It tells us that all the forces acting on it are balanced. So in addition to this pushing force, we have the force of gravity and the normal force, and those would have to be balanced so that it doesn't accelerate up or down. And then we also would have to have a force balancing this pushing force, and that would have to be the force of friction and that's static friction, so we put an S. So if we know that this force is 70 newtons, then that also tells us that the force of static friction is 70 newtons. And that's it. That's all there is to finding the force of static friction in this particular problem. Now one thing to keep in mind is the equation we saw for the force of static friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So, do we have enough information here if we wanted to find the coefficient of static friction between the couch and the floor? We would need to know the normal force and we would need to know the force of static friction. However, this sign here means less than or equal to. So this is only useful if we know that our force of static friction is equal to this quantity. And what that means is that the force of static friction is at its maximum value. So if we pull a little harder here on the couch, perhaps it still won't move. That means the force of static friction will increase maybe to 80 newtons or 90 newtons. So we don't have enough information here to use this um, equation to solve for the coefficient of friction because we don't know that this is the maximum value of static friction. So let's look at an example where we do know that. Let's say Whoops. Okay, let's say in this example we have um, the same couch, still has mass of 100 kilograms, but this time we push on it with a force of 230 newtons and it just budges. So the force that it takes us just to barely move it, to get it uh, from rest to set in motion, that is equal to the maximum force of static friction. So now we could label this force of friction static maximum. Okay, so we've been pushing harder, 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 and this is the force with which it just begins to budge. So that's equal to the maximum static friction. So we also have the force of gravity, and that's balanced by the normal force. Okay. So now, let's say we want to find the coefficient of static friction. Now we have enough information because we know the force of static friction is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. In this case, we know that this has to be equal because we're at a maximum value for our static friction force. It's not less than this. It's at its maximum, so it's equal to that. So we can say F, F, S max equals mu s times the normal force. So in order to solve for mu s, we need to know this, which we know because we know it must be balanced um, by our pulling force. So that's going to be 230 newtons. And then we also need to know the normal force. The normal force is equal to the force of gravity. And that's not given, but the mass is given. So using our gravity equation, Fg equals m times g, we can figure out what that is. So that would just be 100 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. So that gives us a force of gravity of about 980 newtons. And we know that that also must equal the normal force because those have to be balanced. So now that we know that, we can plug that in over here for our normal force. So we can plug in 230 newtons here, mu s is our unknown, and this is 980 newtons.
So then mu s works out to be 230 newtons divided by 980 newtons. Let's move this up a little bit. There we go. So notice what happens to the units is that they cancel out and we get mu s equals about 0 0.23. So a couple things to notice here. One thing is that this is a, a fraction. It's a number that's less than one. And in general, um, coefficients of friction will always be less than one. Um, the other thing to notice is that the units here cancel out. So what are the units for the coefficient of friction? There are no units. This is a unitless quantity. It's really just a ratio of the force of friction to the force of the normal force. Um, so the units cancel out. That's our answer. So that would be the coefficient of static friction between the couch and the floor. Let's try one more example. Let's say this time we know the coefficient of friction and we need to figure out what the force, uh, the maximum force is to pull an object across the floor. So let's say this time we have a box and our mass of our box is going to be 25 kilograms. And we want to know what's the maximum force we would need to exert to get this box just to budge. So that happens when our pulling force is equal to our force of static friction when it's at a maximum. So if we can figure out this, then that will tell us what our pulling force needs to be. So we also have the force of gravity and the normal force. And we also have uh, mu. So mu is given this time and this is 0 0.65. So this is a higher number than it was in the previous example. That means these two surfaces are more rough or um, there's more friction between these surfaces than there was between our previous example. So perhaps this is um, a wooden crate being pushed across a concrete floor. Okay, so now we need to figure out what the force of static friction maximum is. So we can use our equation, FFS max, we know that's when it's equal to mu s times the normal force. Okay, it could be less than that if it wasn't at a maximum, but when it's at a maximum, it's equal to that. So then we can plug in our mu s, 0.65, and, uh, but we need to know the normal force. So we're going to find that the way we did before. We know fg equals m times g, and that has to be equal to the normal force. So that's going to be 25 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared and that gives us about 245 newtons. So now that we know the force of gravity, we can plug that in also for the normal force because we know that's balanced. Multiply those together, that gives us about 159 newtons and that we solved for the force of static friction maximum, but we know that also must be equal to the force of the push. So to completely answer our question, how hard do we need to push to budget, we would show that 159 newtons has to equal the force of our push. And that's it.